Dear progressive naysayers, let me start by making one critical assumption, despite all popular conspiracy theories, to support my very important macroeconomic point. The coronavirus pandemic is not human-made. This is not a classic war or the Great Depression, not even the Great Recession, all resulting from our own wrong choices. No one wanted this pandemic. It's like 9-11, but on a global scale. A completely unexpected and horrible disaster, destroying families, communities and nations. Something no company and no industry should be blamed for. So this time it makes a lot of sense to support everyone without any unfair bias. Every business and every human economic life, every employee and every employer. No individual and no company should be left behind because everyone and everything has been impacted. Many dreams are broken and plenty of opportunities are gone forever. Yes, we need to provide all companies with the profits they are unable to make and we need to provide all people with the income they are unable to earn. I'm fully aware that such a massive emergency crusade, fully shared and much bigger than during the global financial crisis, requires many hard political choices and even more bold macroeconomic decisions. But it's morally just and socially necessary. And let's be clear, there are many small and large businesses begging for assistance today that were already struggling to deliver value in the run-up to this crisis. But it's imperative for the future that we still support these businesses without leaving them undeservedly to be lost due to the extraordinary pandemic events that surround them. With this view in mind, let me quote some of your apparently intellectually sound request. The overwhelming priority must be the protection of employees and not shareholders or bondholders. The government must take equity stakes in the companies in the rescues and taxpayers must enjoy some of the economic upside after recovery. Making loans is better than writing checks since loans must be paid back. Easy credit could make companies overly indebted with little ability or incentive to invest, dragging down healthy firms. It made economic sense to support everyone when the pandemic was expected to be short-lived and its effects mild. The helping hands of governments and central banks were needed when the crisis hit, but now they may have to pull back to enable more natural market mechanisms. Public money should not be used to support losers and unused resources. Lenders will have to absorb big losses. Those who can should raise more capital, even at depressed prices. If you can't make it without a bailout, even in a pandemic, you don't deserve to be in business. I know that you always insist that any governmental aid to private businesses should be conditioned to on a compliance with a long list of progressive demands. That's all economic crisis should be used to make capitalism more inclusive and sustainable. But please, not this time and not in this way. Let's stop obsessing about what kind of capitalism we want to have after the crisis. Yes. It would be very convenient to support only those companies that are robust enough to support the future economy. Yes, many businesses assisted today will have to change in the future what they do and how they do it, and a large number of them will one day prove to be unviable. It is presumptuous, however, to believe today that we know which companies and which industries truly deserve a bailout. No one knows if consumers will return in the same numbers and how their behavioral responses will change. Please tell me now 
when the whole economy is collapsing at once and we face a disastrous wave of joblessness? Do you ask which family is supportive or abusive, which borrows too much or drinks too much, which is obese and which one eats a healthy diet? No. You try to help all families, good and bad, weak and strong. No economic law should be selective or retroactive. Not even your right to heal capitalism for the same reason.